Hi, and welcome to Life on the 49th. As a wood heating professional, I often get asked, how close can my wood stove sit to the wall? Well, every stove is different, so there's no one answer for this. In today's video, I'm going to go through the factors that will affect it to help you decide exactly where your stove needs to sit. So in this video, I will help you figure out whether you have a double wall or a single wall pipe, where to find the information on your clearances, and I'll cover some shielding requirements if you do want to reduce your clearances. So I'd like to begin by saying I live in Canada and we have a testing standard that we follow. If you're in a different country, you'll need to research what your testing standard is and make sure your stove is tested to it. So all new stoves will have a tag on the back of them. It's sometimes kind of hard to see them or read them, but it's a good place to start. It should say on there somewhere, ULC S627, which is the current testing standard. And there'll be a brief description of the clearances for the wood stove. It can be kind of hard to read and see uh, the, all this information on that little tag. And so I like to reference the manual. So the very first thing you'll notice once you are looking at your manual is there'll be different clearances for single wall pipe versus double wall pipe. And how can you tell the difference? So I have a couple of pieces here to show you. This is a single wall pipe. It's a single piece of stainless steel metal. Um, there is an 18 inch clearance off of this pipe to a wall. And this here is a piece of double wall. So you can see there's two layers, stainless steel and this has a six inch clearance to a wall. And the reason I bring this up is because it does affect the wood stove clearance and they are different, so don't confuse them. So if your stove is all hooked up and you're not sure if you have single wall or double wall, the easiest way to tell the difference between the two is a single wall pipe will sit down into your flue collar connection on your stove and you will still see that collar around it. As opposed to if you have a double wall pipe, it will sit this way down onto the stove and the only thing that you'll see is just the pipe sitting on the top of the stove. So, now that you've determined whether or not you have double wall or single wall pipe, let's take a look at our manuals. So I've printed out the clearance page for a Pacific Energy Super LE. I really like the way Pacific Energy does their manuals. I find that they're easy to read and in a very simple format. So we're going to go over three manuals and I'll start with this one. So here I see it says single wall connector, which basically is referring to the black pipe or flue pipe and double wall connector. So let's say I want to, I will be using a double wall connector with a stove parallel to the wall. So I can see here that with that example, my stove, the very back of my stove can sit five inches from the wall and the side of my stove to the side wall can be 14 inches to the wall. Another common installation is kitty corner or at a 45. Here, using a double wall connector, the corners of my stove can sit four inches from the wall. So, to give you another example, I'm going to go through my Blaze King Princess uh, 1006 manual with you. They do things a little bit differently. They basically state a few different installation types and options here and they don't really give a breakdown of double wall versus single wall but they do show you here check with local building codes and pipe manufacturers for pipe clearances in Canada 18 inch clearances from single wall pipe is required so these are essentially written the same regardless and they're leaving it up to you to ensure that you're not too close on your pipe as long as your wood stove is sitting where they state so, they give a roof exit versus a wall exit. Now the difference between those two are 
this is an example of a wall exit. The pipe comes up and goes out and assumingly into a chimney up here. Whereas a roof exit or ceiling exit, the pipe would go straight up and into your chimney at the ceiling height and up through the home. So let's say I'm using a single wall pipe with a roof exit, parallel and corner, no fan kit required. The fan kits on these actually reduce the clearances. So I'm going to see, I wanna know how close it can be to the back wall and to the side wall. So I wanna find out A and B. So in my particular example, the side wall can be 16 inches from the uh, combustible wall and the rear can be nine. If that's too much or I wanted to reduce it, you can do shielding or get a fan kit for this particular model. If you are using a fan kit in the same scenario with, uh, sorry, um, side shields and a fan kit, you could then reduce those clearances down to 10 inches and six inches. And same theory applies with the wall exit. So definitely recommend reading your manual over thoroughly. I'm sure you will find some things out and uh, learn a lot about your stove. So I just wanted to include this manual because this is for an old stove that we used to have. It's a Vermont Casting Defiant Encore and it's from probably the early 80s. And I see here, if I look through the small print, Here's all the different testing standards for all the different countries, and right here, ULC S627. So that's a Canadian testing standard, which means that the clearances in this manual would be considered compliant. So when I flip through to my clearance page, it's a little different um, in this particular example. They show an unprotected surface as opposed to a protected surface. And now you'll notice that the sides and rear clearances, and even the corner clearances, for older stoves are quite a bit larger. Which is why at the time, people relied more heavily on shielding. So this manual shows a lot more um, with the shielding it's shown here, which is an air space, a non-combustible surface with an air space, versus uh, a combustible wall, no airspace. So in this particular example, let's say I want to do the corner clearance to an unprotected wall. This is saying that this needs 24 inches. So in that circumstance, you're probably going to want to install a shield. Something I get asked often is if you're required to put tile or rock or something non-combustible on the wall, and you do not. The clearances are written to combustible. If so, you already have tile or rock on your wall, that's fine. But as an inspector, I would measure from your wood stove through the tile or rock to the combustible wall behind it. If you are installing a shield, a proper shield with an airspace, it would then reduce your clearances down. And it can be done for like the example of the older Vermont casting, to reduce those clearances to something that works better for your space. So I hope you found that video very helpful. If you have more wood heating questions, please check out my channel and subscribe. Have a great day.